Hey guys, how's it going? So, um, on a, a little bit of request, I'm going to try and do a really kind of a short video this week that's an, a practical introduction to thinking about um, variation in traditional Irish flute music. Now, this is a behemoth <laughs> subject, and it's it's one that's a little bit difficult um, to define. So even if you look on, um, for example, on the on the Cultus Kiltori Aaron website, there's an ex excerpt I'll, I'll quote, um, a link below this, but it's from Seamus McMahona, and it points out that even defining variation in Irish music, and in fact even defining Irish music, can be um, a somewhat contested uh, fact, you know. Um, people have different definitions of what goes into Irish music, and of course people have different definitions of what variation even is. I think um, it's not too far off the bat to think about variation as a kind of um, improvisation in Irish music, although that being said, it's not nearly like the type of improv you would find in jazz music. Um, I think it's generally agreed it's much more subtle, um, and it usually is in a similar genus <laughs> as ornamentation, um, but is maybe considered not to be the exact same thing. So what I'm going to try and do here is just give you, um, this is much more of a, of a conversation opener than a, a definition by any means. I'm not a a lecturer or, or anything. Um, that being said, if you do have some good sources on um, reading about variation in Irish music, please do put them in the comments. I'd love to read about it and then all the, the, the fluty people who um, might end up here. Uh, it'd be great to kind of start a discussion on, on variation and Irish flute playing. Um, maybe we'll build on this conversation over time. That being said, um, there are sort of four things I think that I would um, suggest if I can even uh, be so arrogant as to do that, but four things I'd suggest about approaching um, variation in, in Irish flute playing um, just from experience. Um, so those things are going to be, um, one, get very familiar um, with a specific tune. Two is going to be to actually write out the tune um, on a piece of paper. Three is going to be listen, 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 listen ad infinitum. Uh, and four is going to be don't be afraid to screw up. <laughs> so those are my four practical tips. You can stop watching now uh, if you want, but let's go through them really quickly. So um, again, what is variation in Irish music? It's not dissimilar to the idea of uh, you know classical pieces where you might have variations on a theme and then a composer will write down an initial melody uh, and that'll be followed up with a number of twists to that melody. And the, the point maybe there that carries over is like in Irish music, you don't you don't want to vary a tune so much that you actually lose the original tune. Um, the the melody needs to be still recognizable, but the the subtlety or the magic is in perhaps tweaking um, tweaking that melody so it's still the same uh, as it was originally created. But you can tell there's some kind of um, you know that magic difference that really catches people's imagination. So. Um, the, the easiest way to do that and the first thing to think about is to become very, very familiar with a tune um, first. So I know when I was trying to learn how to do variations at the very beginning, um, people would say you should, this is usually for competitions when I was a bit younger, but they'd say um, when you compete or perform, you should pick a tune that you're extremely familiar with. Um, and to me, the biggest image that comes to mind for that is, you now I've never raced a car or a motorbike, but it's kind of the idea of being a rally car driver, right? And um, um, it's the idea that you want to get in your rally car, and if you're really going to successfully race a rally car, you will have driven around the track for the rally car race hundreds of times, and you can be able to sort of like hug the curves of each tune and know where to kind of, um, uh, you know, turn the wheel exactly. You know, you want to be very, very physically familiar with a tune that you want to play. And you can probably hear some of this on the tunes that I um, try to bring to you guys every week. So the ones that I've known for a long time um, always have better variations than the ones I've just learned that week, um, which usually are, are less um, nuanced. So that's the first tip is when you want to develop variations in a tune, um, pick one that you're very comfortable with, like a comfortable blanket. <laughs> um, and you'll you'll know the ins and outs of the tunes much much more intimately. Uh, second thing is to write the tune down. So this is something else I was trying to do when I was trying to become more natural in um, 
implementing uh, variations in melody. So it's it's quite helpful actually, even if you don't write it down, uh, the melody of a tune in a, in a kind of a staff notation. Um, although if you're very familiar with regular staff notation, please feel free to use that. But um, you can just take a scrap of paper and do little bar lines with a pencil and write out the, the actual alphabet letters of the tune. What you're really doing is you're looking for a kind of a visual map. And what you want to do after you write the tune out um, that you're working with is to to quite literally look at it like a map. Uh, it's like your rally notes if we want to go on with the original euphemism. So um, what you want to do is identify certain places which would be quite good to insert a variation. Um, it's almost like your mind is going along the track and you're like, variation to be inserted here and here and here. And um, that way you'll know that there's a point coming up, it's like a pit stop, um, where you're going to drop in a variation, whatever that might come out to be. Um, and that's just really helpful. So you're creating creating a map for yourself. There are some usual places where variations may occur. So on the turn of a tune, for example, um, I think that the, the good wisdom on this is maybe don't even vary a tune that much on the first time through, wait until the second time through, um, the turn of the tune, uh, in between parts, um, the second measure, usually you don't want to, if it's a dance piece, you don't want to screw up the downbeat, so keep the downbeat going, but maybe at the end of a bar, um, and just map out where you think is a good location for the variation. That was point two. Point three is to listen, 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 and this is something that is still part of, like when I practice today, um, this is something that I, I love doing, so especially if you have a pretty developed ear um, for traditional music, you want to pick a particular player. Um, it could be anyone. It, it could be a flute player, it could be a fiddle player, it could be a box player, it could be, if you were really inventive, it could be a jazz flutist, it could be a, really anyone. Um, and listen to them lots of times over. If you have a, a way to slow down the speed, you can even listen to a, a slow recording of that player. And what you're trying to pick out is key elements of what makes their style their style by how they vary the music. And if you become very um, intimate or familiar with a particular player, you'll, you'll almost be able to kind of guess which of five <laughs> variations or ten or whatever sometimes that they will tend to employ on impulse. Um, but that that's really almost the best way, I think, to come up with different variations because every single player will have layered on different kinds of variations. It could be a, they do an arpeggio at the end of a tune, maybe that's like a, a classic one, or they might uh, do a tiny little trill, like uh, the chieftains are pretty much the only ones that do trills and, and pull it off with, you know, snazziness. Um, but you'll, you'll be able to almost hear, and if you're um, very logical or something, you might be able to even catalog uh, these different variations, and th those almost become emblematic of a particular person's style. So. Um, yeah, number one, pick a tune you're very comfortable with. Number two, draw a map of the tune on a piece of paper and locate where the variations should be dropped. Um, three is to listen and build up this kind of repository of different variations of other players. And then, of course, the idea, like any good art, is that you artists steal <laughs> from other artists in terms of concepts. So you pick the ones you like and you leave the ones you don't like. And the last one is don't be afraid to screw up. So this reminds me of a a lot of things about being creative, for example, um, they sometimes say, like, I, I don't know how to paint, for example, and I might find it quite overwhelming to have a blank canvas in front of me. Um, I might be thinking like, oh, what if I make a mistake? What if I make something that looks really hideous? You know, um, it, it's a similar thing with, with music, especially if you're playing socially. Um, it can be almost kind of em embarrassing. You don't really want to try to do new variations if you're playing live because what if you screw up or drop the tune or drop the tempo or something um that's where sessions come in really really handy because if you're playing in a session uh, with other people uh usually you can't be heard unless you're kind of just starting a tune um so it's very convenient way to try out all the harebrained variations you think might sound good and you almost want to try to be inventive and screw up you might even um I don't know, sometimes I even enjoy, like, I'm, I'm sure other people don't enjoy it, but, like, trying to see what's the ugliest note I can pick that still sounds cool, you know, it's, it t kind of take it to the limits, you don't do that all the time, but, you know, um, and that that's really part of the fun of this, it's like, 
the old Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Expect to screw up uh, 999 times before you find one you like. But then when you find a variation you like, stick that into your memory bank, and then we can go back to step two and you can drop it into your rally map um, in the future. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, that's not a very sophisticated analysis of variation, but it's four kind of practical tips on how to become more um, fluid with playing variations. And yes, you know, especially if you're listening to somebody for the first time, it might sound like they're coming up with some variations on the fly. But what I think they're probably doing is, for most people, they already know in their mind what kind of variations they like. And the part that's really randomized is probably where they're dropping it into the tune, which is part number two. So just a few thoughts. Um, please feel free to add new thoughts, to disagree with me. Uh, I would, I genuinely, this is my, almost my favorite thing about having, uh, doing these videos is I love hearing your thoughts because it's, it's pretty cool. We can connect over the internet and maybe not be anywhere near each other, but all have an interest and a passion for the flute. So again, um, four practical tips for variation on the flute and uh, traditional Irish music. One, um, do variations on tunes that you're very comfortable with. Two, um, write out the tunes on a piece of paper to make your rally map. Uh, three, uh, listen, 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 listen to a variety of players. You can do that for your entire life and that'll be enough study <laughs> um, to keep you occupied. And then finally, um, don't be afraid to screw up. In fact, intend to screw up because that's where all the cool ideas come from. Okay, um, hopefully that was remotely useful. <laughs> okay, have a good week. Bye.